So I wanted to discuss a bit about how AI is changing software. I mean, it has kind of introduced a little bit of chaos with image generation, automated renderings. Even before the AI craze, we started with automated generation of city blocks, floor plans, and so on. So I just wanted to take a moment to pause for myself, like take a breath, take a wide look at the technology and where it's going and make some, some high level conclusions and decisions about in which direction to go, which direction to follow. So if you ask me, most software has kind of three layers, so to speak. The first layer is the, is the database. Like take a BIM software like Revit. It's a database. It's a table of tables of different elements and their properties. You can easily imagine a Revit model as a lot of Excel sheets with the only addition that some cells in those Excel sheets also have geometry attached to them, some kind of a mesh, right? So even a non-beam modeling software like Rhino is a database. A Rhino document has a table of layers, a table of blocks, a table of objects in the document. And again, in that table, aside from all the properties of the objects, there is some geometry attached. So if we agree that the first layer of software is this kind of database, then the second layer is this crude layer. Now in the software development world, CRUD is a very well-known acronym. It means create, read, update, and delete. So if you have a database of elements, you want a lot of different functions that enable you to create those elements like lines, polylines, surfaces, solids. So you want to be able to read those elements from the database. So in the case of 3D modeling software, that means both reading their properties and visualizing their geometries. Uh, then you need update, you need to be able to change those elements, for example, transform them like translate, move, scale, rotate, but also change the control points, trim, do Boolean operations and so on. Eventually you want to be able to delete the elements from the database. Again, remember, a line is just an object in the database, right? So it's a layer, for example, so you can perform all the crude operations on any of the layers as well. So this second layer is basically a set of these functions that help you manipulate the database. But how do you invoke those functions, those operations? Well, that's the third layer, right? It's the user interface. It's a system of windows, tabs, panels, and buttons that lets you select the input elements uh, for different functions with your mouse or with your keyboard. And then you can actually call that function. So when you click on create surface from planar curves, it asks you to select the curves that will become an input to a function, those curves in the database. And then it will call the function and output a surface that will be added uh, back to the database of objects. So this is how most, if not all software works and definitely all the software in our building industry. Now that we have simplified things to the core and looked at the system from the highest level, in these three layers, I want to ask how does AI affect this, right? So let's think this through. What I've been doing for the almost 20 years now is automation. That means I've been trying to optimize and build upon the second and the third layer. So if I were working on a project like Shara Zedek Medical Center or the Las Vegas Sphere, I would ask, how can I write my own functions that combine existing functions so that they're built on top of them? And how can I add my own tools to the user interface that call my own functions to automatically do something that would usually uh, not be done manually. When I automate, I create my own function that does what I want using the existing functions. So writing a software starts with the simplest possible functions, right? There are somewhere those zeros and ones and then grouping those uh, into more complex functions and then grouping those into more complex functions. And then at some point, software developers stop because they think the users don't need more than what they provided and that, uh, that they are the functions that are general enough that can be used by everyone. And then we come in and just try to add some layers on top. That's all. And now we finally come to the AI part. So how does AI change this? Well, AI will try and eventually succeed in, uh, to eliminate this second layer and drastically simplify the third layer. So what do I mean by that? You will have the database for whatever field or domain uh, you're working in. Let's talk about Rhino, for example. You will have the document and that will hold the database of objects, geometries, layers, blocks, whatever. Then the UI will have to enable you to tell the software what you want and allow you to be precise enough. Sometimes it's faster and more precise to draw with your mouse, right? Uh, I'm not disputing that. If I want to draw a flat plane, I can do that in half a second using my mouse instead of writing now a whole sentence. But for more complex text tasks, it will make sense. A couple of months ago, I showed how I can use OpenAI's LLM to draw a simple line in Rhino using speech. 
And uh, what the AI did in that case is search for one of the functions that I prepared. It's called function calling. So it had to figure out which function to call, figure out the inputs for that function from the prompt, and then simply execute the function, right? So I improved this second layer a little bit, right? What I did then is I made a plan to write like 2,000 functions, most of them created with AI, and then create this tool for modeling in Rhino or in Revit with speech. But then I stopped myself because I think I would simply work on an intermediate solution that would soon be obsolete. I believe that the uh, next step will come very soon when you no longer have to write and prepare these functions. The AI will be able to create them on the fly. Remember, my plan was to write most of them using AI anyway. So there is a clear <laughs> indication there of something wrong with the idea and of some middle solution that can be skipped here. So what does that mean uh, that I can skip the middle step? Well, I will tell the AI, for example, please create a grid of lines. Start with the point zero, zero, zero and go in the X direction and Y direction. Put these distances for the X direction, these distances for Y, etc., etc. I will describe what I want. In this case, a special system of, of uh, grid lines, and then uh, the AI will then use this not to combine existing prepared function and call them to make it happen. It will create a function on the fly at runtime and execute it. This is not magic. This is the state of the art today. I already uh, made a couple of examples that work like this, and I will show you soon. It, it works pretty well, and it will work better and better as the models get better and better. And we will see this happening all around because it's not really complicated to do. Right? Um, but it will take a little bit of time before it's truly effective. Now, of course, with the development of AI, time is relative. It's all happening so fast, but we'll see. And as I said, for some things, it won't be as effective. But here is my point or my prediction, especially for us developers or computational designers, if you will. Uh, we will become more and more like software architects. If we go back to that tree of functions, that hierarchy that goes from simpler systems to more complex systems, no one can say exactly where it should stop. The more we can do, the more we want to do as architects or engineers. But the important thing is to understand that this hierarchy and existing functions will all go to the AI model. This AI model then learns how to create them from scratch and can then continue creating more complex uh, functions, combining them instead of us. Eventually, this whole tree will, tree will get replaced by a single AI brain. And our job, to tell it what to do. Now, that might sound somehow naive or simple or might even sound defeating, but it doesn't have to be. First, a building is a very complex system. Like to tell this brain what to generate and how so that it fits your exact project needs will be a challenging task. Second, every technology we humans create follows a clear path, simpler to use, but more complex under the hood. So as our buildings become more complex and more, most importantly, more interconnected, you could argue that we really, really need these brains to help us handle this complexity. And we have to leave that layer to the AI and move one layer up to, to a management level, so, so to speak. And I'm not talking about the UI layer. I'm saying that we need to create this new layer where we will live, a layer of creating systems of interconnected prompts and questions, systems for testing different solutions, optimizing them for different criteria, doing things that we don't have time to do now, even though if we know they would be very beneficial. So is this layer really necessary? Like why doesn't AI do that as well? Well, there's a clear indication that artificial intelligence will surpass our biological intelligence. I think there is no real doubt about it, at least for me. I've heard some very knowledgeable people claim how LLMs are really stupid, how their dog is 100 times smarter, but I'm definitely not in that camp. I strongly disagree with them. So if it does surpass our intelligence, can I AI take this layer as well? Can we just tell it to design a house here and give it a couple of objectives and criteria and watch it work? I think yes, but now we're ex uh, exiting the realm of technology and going a little bit into psychology. And the question is whether we should do that. Uh, I think we will want to keep uh, some control, creative control, so that we as humans can make creative decisions about the ways we uh, mold our surroundings, right? There is an open question as to whether AI models having a different type of intelligence will be able to understand the biological needs of emotionally driven humans. But uh, we don't have to go 
there. That's a separate and very complex subject, and I'm as clueless about it as most people are. But one thing is clear, uh, throughout the history, as technology is progressing, we need to adapt to that progress. And this was my attempt to look at this picture from a very high level so that I know what direction to take and what things to work on. So, as I mentioned, I am working on this transition from the tree to the brain. Uh, and on the creation of this new layer, I will I have the examples on my computer right now and I will show them to you soon. The question is, what are you going to do? Stay free. <laughs>